it's it's we have a real hard time because we are kind of caught between a rock and a hard place in regards of those of us who are in the church and are really wanting to preserve the tradition of the church, not for tradition's sake, but for the sake of Christ. Um, and it's sometimes you can find yourself on a def- on the defensive with people who are outside the tradition, like evangelicals and stuff like that. But I think almost mistakenly, because there are, people aren't as hostile to us and to what the church has to say, I think, as they were, I don't know, years ago. You know what I mean? I think that... Like how many years ago? Like what are you talking about? I mean, I just remember. It, maybe it's just my maybe it's my experience, but it just felt like, you know, twenty years ago, coming into the church, it was so unknown, mm. and there was just a real wall there. And I just, it seems as if a lot's happened. The emergent movement, which was where evangelicals were trying to like go back in time and like Mm -hmm. mix and match Catholicism and then like icons, not even realizing icons are like more from the Orthodox, you know, tradition. So that's, that's kind of come and gone. Um, The internet has exploded, obviously. Mm -hmm. So all the like different um, debates and there's, and there's like a whole world of evangelicals kind of like debating orthodoxy that I didn't even know about in regards of Mm -hmm. trying to refute orthodoxy and things like that. So it's just, there's a lot more exposure now than I think there was in the, in 20 years ago. Um, Cause we, when we talk, when we've talked about orthodoxy online, it's always been in the context of like us and like, you know, teachers from within the church, whether they be lay or, or, or clergy. But what I, what is lost on a lot of, well, what, what was lost on me for sure. I can't speak for anyone else, but what was lost for me is that there's a whole nother world of people who are kind of, orbiting and discussing orthodoxy that aren't orthodox they're mm-hmm. evangelicals yeah. and they're things mm-hmm. like that you know what i'm saying and so i just think that there's exposure far more than we can we can realize because the thing is it gets real easy to be in the bubble mm-hmm. and 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 to forget that there's people kind of trying to peer inside Hi, everyone, and welcome to Royal Path. Um, I'm your host, Andrew, and I'm going to ask Cyprian and Father just to um, get us going. What is the um, a moment or protect, like maybe like a whole movie that's maybe secular by nature, but is very, very like of Christ to you guys? Um, like something out of a movie and you see it and you're like, well, that's, that's obviously Christ. Um, so give you guys a second. Uh, mm. I have two real quick. There's the Hacksaw Ridge um, where the guy absolutely refused to use a gun. You, you guys know this movie at all? I've heard of this movie. Yeah. I've heard of this. It seems oh. kind of, is it true? Is it true? Yeah. The guy's actually, he lived. I mean, he's a real guy. He's okay. a seventh day Adventist refused to okay. use a gun. Uh, only joined okay. up during world war two. So that he, um, and again, I'm sure someone's in Father's term, Father Turbo's term, going to cookie to clack and say, "Well, they obviously like emphasized it for the movie." And sure, that's fine, whatever. But the point is, is that like in this movie, it was portrayed that he um, was on uh, Iwo Jima, I think. I think. Okay. Uh, and uh, during World War II, and he absolutely refused to use a gun his entire training. Uh, okay. You know, constantly bullied, constantly slandered by every other person. They would punish other people in the in his like company or whatever because he refused to use a gun. Desmond Doss is his name, Desmond Doss. And um, he only wanted to be a medic and he would run around the battlefield refusing to fire at people um, okay. and just only help. And then there's this part in the movie where he's in the underground tunnels that the Japanese were stationed that they were hiding in and he finds one that shot. And bleeding and the guy reaches for his gun and he like puts his hand on the gun or something like that and gives him morphine and medicine 
and like fixes him up and like patches the Japanese soldier who shot and then runs off. Like, and people say from the accounts, bullets were like whizzing right over. Like they, he could not get hit. Like he was like running around all over the place, just like not getting hit. And, um, hmm. you know, uh, the whole time he's just like praying, like, God, just one more Lord, just one more, just help me get one more, help me save one more. It's actually really, really fantastic. Like, just on YouTube, they have those mm. two 10 minute long clips of just him doing whatever. It's sensationalized, obviously. And then always it's going to be the um, part in the two towers, Lord of the Rings movie. It's not accurate to the book, but the part where Gandalf shows up right as all hope is lost. And then they look to the east and he's standing on top of the hill with the staff, you know, mm-hmm. with the army, with the riders of uh, riders of Rohan. So those two things always like evoke powerful for me, it evokes powerful imagery of Christ. So yeah. What about you guys? Well, Joseph Campbell would say, so I guess Joseph Campbell would say that if you were to see anything that represented the hero's journey, so Mm. heroism that you would be. So it's basically every movie that has a hero. Mm is fundamentally representing Christ with Christ being the arch- archetype of the hero. Yes. But I think that there's more to Desmond Doss in that portrayal than like Luke Skywalker. Cause Luke Skywalker is Christ like at certain points, but it's like at the same time, I mean like that to me is like, you can practically like feel like the ethos of Christ, you know, at that very moment, at least for me when I was watching that stuff. And yeah, you absolutely. So you're saying right. because, because of the, well, it's because the guy's a seventh day Adventist, right? Cause he's a Christian. Sure. Yeah. But like out, I'm saying, I'm saying like on a more, like on a more universal context, I guess the argument would be that, that someone sacrificing themselves for, like the 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 highest good mm-hmm. that a sacrifice for the highest good that, to be Jordan Petersony about it would be, I mean, would basically be, I mean that is Christ, and so it's like everything that we think is he- heroic is basically what we're we're just acknowledging Christ. We're the acknowledging the, su- the supremacy of Christ. So it's like it's almost like you can't make a blockbuster movie that isn't that where you don't have a representation of christ like our our narrative structure in our mind it's so built into we're created that way that it like we wouldn't even we wouldn't even think it was interesting that makes sense yeah i don't know if i uh, well like okay who's who's diehard who's jack it's uh what's what's the main uh character? yeah jack something right yeah Bruce Willis's yeah. character from Die Hard. Bruce Willis's character, yes. I would argue. Yes. Maybe, maybe he's not a good example. I, I'm well, not he's gonna... an anti. He's an antihero. Sure, like Deadpool from the Deadpool. He's an, movie. He's an antihero. Sure. Okay. All right. All right. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna give you this to you. I'm sorry right. because I think you. So are I'll, I'll give you. No, I'll give you the example. The, I think the best example in modern times would be Neo in the Matrix. Well, yeah. I mean. That is, that's the answer, right? I mean, that's, that's Neo. Like, yeah. Well, but whether you, it, but it's just like, whether you were a Christian or not, you, people watch the Matrix and they're like, oh, I love the Matrix. It resonates with them at a deep, deep level. But what's resonating with them is Christ. Yes. No, I, I think you're correct. I think you are correct. Like, I'm not saying, well, Cyprian, I'm going to argue this with you. But yeah, no, I, I'd like Last Action Hero, like Arnold Schwarzenegger from Last Action Hero. It's like, uh yeah okay maybe but what about you father it would, would would you be the matrix or has you got something else i think uh, you're muted you're, mu- you're muted or something you lost no we just lost your mic came unplugged no no hey don't worry we'll fix it in post dead air <laughs> i don't think we could add voices in post <laughs> Hey, I know it's just we're my gonna answer. dub. We're gonna dub Father Turbo. That yeah. would be. Oh, that's funny. No, yeah. we still. Can, yeah. yeah. Now, now we got you. So, you know, I we talked about this before at one point, but I would say Magnolia. Oh, yeah, yeah that's we a good did one. talk about this. Okay, yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, I still hold to that. 
So, because it, it's Magnolia is that space in which everyone it's even zoomed out more than what Cyprian is saying in regards to mm-hmm. you know, the kind of archetype, but it's like God, <laughs> you know, and, mm-hmm. and everyone being in that light and just um, seeing, having truth, painful truth revealed, but is hidden being revealed. Um, people coming to reckoning. Um, oh. I mean, it's just, it's all there. You know, and the the tragedy in it is of such a Christian dynamic. That's what I would say. So, hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I love that movie. It's been I don't know thirty years since I seen it or something like that. But yeah, isn't that crazy? And we have a rewatch. Just just a little side tangent. Is isn't that weird? Like as you get older, it's been like it's been twenty years since I've seen that movie. Like it's probably been twenty years since I've seen. Attack of the Clones, the second Star Wars movie or whatever. Like, mm-hmm. it's probably been 20 years since I've seen that movie. And, like, there's a good chance I will never watch that movie ever again in my entire life. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. There's... Yeah. Anyway, so, uh, Cyprian, I think we had you had talked about something you wanted to kind of bring up. Or you had a video or something you wanted to plug. Well, just this idea that had been that's been percolating and then when father was speaking earlier it sort of came up to me about um and really and really true for me as as well in terms of my own coming to christ is you know people the 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 context was you know people not really pursuing and trying to acquire grace and to acquire the holy spirit and because because there aren't stakes, because people are, or there are stakes, the stakes are really high in terms of S-T-A-K-E-S, in terms of everything is at stake. But I think that it's not, when I read the lives of the saints, it seems just like it was more visceral, especially for the ancient saints, that like, if I don't do this, a lot of things are going to go wrong for me in like, in just in the world, in my everyday, everything I'm living in my life, like things are going to go wrong if I'm not following Christ Mm. wholeheartedly, viscerally, a lot of things are going to go wrong. And like you brought up, like uh, the, the view of it as a, as well, salvation, right. Viewing it as a hospital that it's like, yeah, if you don't take those antibiotics, there's a lot that's like, you're going to die. You know what I mean? Like this sort of idea that it's like, no, everything is at stake. But I think, there's the, the the world has this thing about like it's got all of these problems solved, which it doesn't have solved, but it's got all of these problems solved. So nothing's at stake. So I could just choose to go this way. I could choose to go that way. Oh, it's going to be fine. I can't really mess it up because the system has got it under control. And the thing that really kicked it off to me was this. Let me see if I could pull it up here. OK, this little clip from Donald Trump. I believe this is he's in. Um, Orange County. Okay. Tell me if you guys can hear this, but he's got, this is his, I couldn't believe that I was, that I was hearing this. Like, so here we go. It's just, and we will immediately stop. And some people are going to say, oh, this is terrible. I can't believe, you know, these people are killing people when they go into the sewers. You'll have 300 young people who are not looking for a good future, walk into a store big department store, and just pillage it. And if you happen to be there when they're there, they'll knock the hell out of you and kill you in some cases. And we will immediately stop all of the pillaging and theft. Very simply, if you rob a store, you can fully expect to be shot as you are leaving that store. Shot. Listen to how long the applause is. I know. And what's, you know, like, that's a man who's used to getting long applauses. He knows what to do afterwards. Because, like, but, I don't know. Like, that was such a showman. Like, sometimes when I make people laugh, I get really uncomfortable afterwards. And I'll be like, um, uh, I don't know what to do. And then, but, like, he just sat there and just, like, he's like, I know exactly what to do with people applauding me like that. I don't know. That was. 
Yeah, well, the, the, even even the even the ways right now. Yeah, even the fact that you could <laughs> first the fact that you could. So what are we talking about here? We're talking about shooting people in the back, is what we're talking about, right? Shooting people in the back, and first to be able to think that like, and this is somebody running for president of the United States. So first, the fact that we've reached the point where somebody on the campaign trail as part of their stump speech is one of my policies is we're going to start shooting people in the back. And then the other thing is that somebody would say that and then there would be all these people like it should have been crickets in there. Like if, if, if we weren't in a completely insane situation, it should have been crickets. But what I realize is that the every single person clapping, the only reason that you would clap for that is if you had a misunderstanding of what's at stake. Like you have to have a complete misunderstanding of what is at stake for for you to be yay yay clapping and it's like and if you have that degree of mis like misunderstanding I don't know how you could even begin to start approaching Christ. This is this is incredible because um, man I I don't even know where to start <laughs> on so many levels. Um, I was just thinking today, I was praying, you know, and, uh, you know, there's, uh, man, it's going to be a rough one tonight. Uh, even, so there's this whole thing. I, I, this is probably just me and, it, and it's my own sin and all these things, but um, I just struggle because so much of what I I think we talk about um, gets lost in regards of um, sure we have like uh, you know amongst ourselves our audience our com- our own kind of like little bubble our little niche whatever you want to call it but it's not lost on me when I'm driving sometimes or like I'm getting ready to you know travel and I'm just thinking I I remember twenty I just I remember it like it was yesterday. I remember 15 like it was yesterday. I remember all the events and all the things that were moving in regards of the the spirits that were that were energized and, and moving and even how things wane and, and kind of like wax and wane. And it's easy to lose sight. And I'm not going to lose sight of what you're saying about stakes, but it's easy to lose sight that you're shown things, you know, and you see this in your own life where God will show you something and say, okay, you learned this lesson. It's going to come back around again. Mm. And when it comes back around again, you, your the interaction with it, it each time, you know, every level, a different devil. And mm. it's going to be, it's going to be more serious and I think there's just so many of us that really act like it's all simulation. Like as Christians, you know what I mean? That this is just, it's like the danger room. It's like the whatever. Ultimately, like, we'll be okay. And like, mm, I, I I see people who come into the church still. And it's, it's, a old, it's old as time, I guess. But, you know, they're excited and blah, blah, blah. But it's like. Do you really know what's at stake here? Do you really understand? Because, you know, it's like when you see people, it's like, man, okay, great. And then like two years later, sometimes even less, a year later, and it's just kind of like, oof. Um, And I'm not talking about getting caught. We all get snagged and hit. This is a war. I'm talking people who are just like, oh, that was fun. And they just just kind of... You know what I mean? And they, yeah, they just, I tried the orthodox thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. just kind of, yeah, 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 or, yeah or like, whatever. And they're still there, right? They're still there, but it's kind of like, oh, yeah, you know, okay, cool, cool, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And I say all this because to me, this all this all has to do with um, even the elect would be deceived because the reality is that um, we've been talking about this for a year, at least, right? About, you know, getting people so backed in a corner. How many times have we had this discussion? And even someone, you know, in the comments will be like, man, I don't know, blah, blah, blah. It's like, 
like, yeah, like we've said before, totally get it. Got kids too. Like nobody likes what's happening, you know, but this is, this is the setup. And this is, this is the setup in the sense that the wave that is upon us, you know, it's like, you prepare for something you prepare for, then the day actually comes when <laughs> it's like, okay, here we are. You know, we're, we're, we're in a time where it's just a matter of, you know, the right spark catching in the right dry patch and whoosh, you know, and it's funny to me because I know some people are going to feel kind of odd about this, but you know, what's kind of like a good canary in the coal mine for me. Uh, in regards to this, is uh, what's your what's your boy's name? Um, the beanie guy. Um, oh, Tim Pool. Tim Pool. Tim Pool. Okay. Here's why. Tim Pool is the kind of representative, and a larger scale of people who would like to see themselves not being caught in the dialectic. Does this yeah. make sense? Like yeah, he if, fancies if, himself outside the fray. He fancies himself outside the fray, but I think I think the problem is he, you know, and it's funny because every once in a while, I guess recently I've been I find myself checking in on what he's saying a lot more recently, and he'll it feels as if that conversation about about Christianity in general. It feels like it's it comes up more than than maybe it had in the past. I don't know if someone could correct me on that, but I think that's I think that I can confirm that it feels it does feel that way for sure. You know, I, I think I think it's it's really fascinating to me because um you know the the reality that people are not even aware of how indebted they are to Christ. So kind of Looping back around to our conversation about the movie, but why why I mentioned Magnolia. This is the context in which I mentioned Magnolia. Um, the atheist guy is, you know, that kind of like nice atheist guy, like, you know, your sister, you know, Brittany, who's dating that guy, Ryan, who's real nice. You know, he's like a clean cut atheist. You know what I'm saying? Ryan, he's great. You know, he he runs the the sandwich shop down the street, that guy. Upstanding, moral, Upstanding, ethical, trustworthy. Yeah, ethical, yeah. You know what I'm saying, Ryan? And he's got the sandwich shop. He's got, you know, the brown shoes and everything. Like, Ryan is indebted to Christ. Even though Ryan would like, oh, you know, he, he Ryan will be, you know, amicable. Like, oh, you know, of course, that's great. It's great your family's Christians, Brittany, blah, blah, blah. But, like, what he doesn't understand is the whole reason why he has any kind of moral inkling as, as we understand as society is Christ. Are you following me? Like that 100%, that revolution, that spiritual and anthropological revolution is completely 100% Christ. Right? Nobody acted like that before Christianity. This is something people don't, they're like, no, nobody was right. nice like that before Christianity. Right. Nobody. <laughs> completely, completely. And so the reason why I'm saying this is because what happens to a lot of us is that we lose sight of that broader understanding. And so we, we make it so narrow where, okay, you know, I believe X, Y, and Z. I do X, Y, and Z, right? And I'm not, I'm not negating that. Just follow what I'm saying. I do X, Y, and Z. I believe X, Y, and Z. And therefore, anyone who doesn't do or believe X, Y, and Z, you know, forget them, whatever. And this is this is kind of like the club and it's all good. And that that's true on a certain level. But what I think is the problem when people don't understand the broader ramifications of Chris, of Christ and, and the way Christ has formed and shaped just broader human society is now, right? So for instance, when you have people who lose sight of the fact that 
what holds society together in the sense of, you know, why shooting someone in the back, why that should be frowned upon when you don't have that under that explicit understanding that it's not inherent in us, right? That it's not inherent in us, then it becomes so easy to lose it, right? Then let me rephrase it a different way because everyone's, I I'm, I'm think I might be losing people. Like, you know, there's that real patriarch statement of those who, what is it? Um, those who don't, uh, it was like like those who won't fight for freedom don't deserve it or what is it you know um oh you could have uh oh it's um, uh hold on <laughs> you know what I'm talking about Sec yeah 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 it's uh, a security 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 or oh I can't I I faced it out in my mind too yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is this is the dodo hour right now. But What's the freedom? The freedom's not free sort of idea. If the freedom's not free sort of idea, those who aren't willing to, uh, I don't know, freedom don't deserve it or something. Yeah, like that. something to that effect. Something like, like it, that, but that's something not like it. that. You know, if you if you take that sentiment, right, and mm -hmm. you kind of turn it on its head in a religious context, right, mm -hmm. and those who don't recognize that the reason why society is cohesive and you can kind of, you know, not fear for your life. Like you're like, you're an animal is because of Christ. Those who don't recognize Christ in that will lose that safety. will lose that. Mm -hmm. um, it will lose. Yes. That, does, does that, I don't have a pithy statement right now because it's late and blah, blah, blah. But mm. I, what well, I'm those, to... those who don't recognize that the, that the Lord is what is their protection. Yeah. Well, then, and, and what don't understand the stakes that, that the high stakes of turning away from the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Because well, good, is, good is good because God is good. Right. Like, I yes. Mean, well, yeah. Or, well, I think the other thing is, is that because, because the, the thing that's interesting is um, these people, they think God's on their side. The ones who are saying, shoot him in the back. Yes. Many of those people clapping would call themselves Christians. Yes, and and this is this is why we kind of find ourselves in these um, in these real traps because I just want to kind of like wipe the table, right, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. just and just start off by saying like this: Okay, it's time to be discerning, right? Mm -hmm. Like if 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 you thought you were being discerning, great, don't take your foot off the gas. It's so time to be discerning right now because what is being leveraged are all the things that Christ warns us in his commandments. You know, I mean, the cares of the world choke out the good seed, choke out the right. And, and the cares of the world are what all this is, is always ground, is always founded upon. Right. Um, and I know it's tough, right? And this is where people get like, okay, father, well, like, what do you expect me to do? Blah, blah, blah. It's like, yeah, man, that's, that's why Christians are champions, like real Christians, you know, not, not the, um, not the statists, not those who are worshiping the state, um, not the antichrist stuff, like real Christians are, are champions because they are, you know, pressed on all sides, but not, but not despairing, not crushed. Uh, like St. Paul says. And this is we're coming up on a, on a time uh, for America right now be because of it. Because again, um, imagine yourself now in this space where you're really trying to discern something, and you go like, "Yeah, okay, this woke stuff, you know, the 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 pedos, the predators, the maps, all that stuff." Okay, boom, 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 right? Okay, boom. Here comes the hard right, literally, you know. And then it's like, hey, I'm with you on that. Pfft, let's clean house. Okay. Okay. You have a problem. Now you have a real problem, right? Because what you don't understand is that when you begin to engage in cleaning house like that, right? Number one, who's to say that you're going to be able to discern, you know, who deserves to be cleaned, who doesn't? I mean, did when we just do you, 
when do you stop? Didn't we just talk about the French Revolution? I mean, like just like a couple episodes ago or mm. something. Yeah, sorry, that's all. No, and people don't realize how mad that stuff was. Well, and why, why, why the guillotine? You know, mm -hmm. like that's the interest because it was the cleanest way. Speaking of cleaning, like it was oh. the cleanest way hmm. to kill somebody. Hmm. Like in every way, like it was humane and sanitary. Yep. It was the humane and sanitary way to execute someone. Yep. I don't know if I knew that. Okay. Yeah, that's hmm. why. I mean, because otherwise they could have used the axe. Think about it. They could have hung somebody. But this is the you know beginning of the Enlightenment. And the idea is, no, so long as we do it in a clean and sanitary way, you know, so long as we do it in a humane way, it's okay for us to round up otherwise innocent people in a very non-Christian way and then abolish Christianity, which is part of the whole thing, and start worship and start a pagan worship again. Officially. See, because see, the, the thing is, is like there's these little tells that I think we need to see, you know, um, and I, I'm going on a limb. I, I'm. I'll say I'm wrong, but I feel like I caught something, you know, doing the Osmandius thing <laughs> a couple of days ago, just trying to see all the different clips kind of coming through, you know. Um, Is that a Watchmen reference or a yeah, reference? Yeah. Okay. All right. And uh, I think I saw something where somebody was talking about, it was like they had, a, they had a Republican debate not too long ago, right? I sound so informed right now. Anyways, uh, but someone was critiquing Trump on his statement against uh, a, a banning abortion, I think it was. Um, Trump was, I, I think it was, he was critiquing DeSantis about his banning of abortion saying it was kind of like a mistake or whatever. And the reason, only reason why I'm saying this is because this is one of those things like, this is the trap again. It's like, okay, you know, why do we, why do we compromise on what policies? How do you choose that? Right, okay. Christian man, Christian woman, right? If you fancy yourself as someone who's like, no, no, no. Like, I'm not culturally a Christian. Like, I, I'm in this thing for real. Okay, you're in this thing for real? Okay, let's talk. How do you discern what policies you will kind of, like, compromise on, right? And this is why politics is such a, is such a sucker's game. Because we all know the line, well, nobody's perfect. You got to choose something. You know what I mean? Lesser of two evils. We, we can we can all talk about this, but you know, um, I know people are gonna just want to run me out of town. I'm pretty sure it was, pretty, I think it might have been Origin, um, was talking about how more than even paganism or anything close to that, Christians needed to be worried about the state and and the worship of the state, and this gets us back to you know, not orthodox, but it's an incredible book, you know, um, Stringfellow and his work on um, the powers, essentially, and how the, the powers are just, they're all fallen. And we so badly want to redeem them. But in that desire to redeem them autonomously, apart from Christ, we end up compromising, Right. Because the state is in of itself antichrist. The state is in of itself um, a cult of death, right? Okay. And people want to bring in Romans 13, all this and that, but that's a whole, that's a whole context. We can talk about that. But I just, before we get there, the, I want to the, bring this up because... What's that? The reference, what's Romans 13? Just So people will, people will talk about Romans 13 and they'll say... Well, Paul, well, St. Paul says in Romans 13 that all government is, you know, basically there by the hand of God and we should obey it, right? That's, that's, 
right? And so people will use that out of context, right? Um, and they'll use that to basically uh, provide cover for blind obscenes to the state. Now, what's interesting to me is that as Christians, right, again, the context here is like, you're in this for real, right? When we find ourselves having to face a choice of like, okay, um, Biden or Trump, let's say, right? Well, clearly I don't want to vote for Biden because everything that's wrong, he's, he's done, right? He's just like the worst president ever, which sure, I agree with that. But then that puts you in a place where you, does that mean that you now are in a place where you have to be, you know, whole hog in on what's going on for Trump? And, and I think some people think that. I think that some people think that, like, yeah, I got to. And here's where I think it becomes really dangerous because we begin to really not only um, kind of, like, turn a blind eye to certain things, right? But we begin to forget why we should be even upset about it in the first place, if that makes sense what I'm saying. You know what I mean? You begin to really lose your moorings Right. You begin to really um, lose that sense of what, why the commandments are the commandments. Mm -hmm. let, me, let me break it down another way. The commandments held for the sake of having your moral, you know, box kind of checked. That's not life giving. Because the Pharisees weren't necessarily just wrong. Like, what was wrong with the Pharisees? The Pharisees didn't hold to the commandments that God had given in a life-giving way. They were autonomous in it. They, they, they wielded the tradition in such a way that, it, was, that it, it tragically became idolatrous, right? It became the focal point for them. It became the means by which their existence is validated, Right. Well, and, and Father, forgive me, but it's like, you know, the uh, sort of the rock stars of Orthodox Judaism, even to this day, the whole thing is that they're Torah scholars, mm -hmm. right? That they can like recite. But it's like it's not about God. It's about the text of the book. Yeah. 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 Right. It's how how proficient they are with the text of this book yeah. rather than with that as the end, rather than it being a means to to get to the most high. Yep. And you're cutting to the you're cutting to the quick here because that's essentially what I'm trying to get at is we can operate in such a way where we kind of have a religious atheism, where we don't really believe that Christ is leading the church, guy in the church, that we really don't believe that Christ has something to say about certain things. And we, 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 in essence, begin to just become, you know, we go on autopilot and we know what's expected of us in a religious sense, right? And I'm not saying religion in just some exclusively um, negative connotation, but we, we know what's expected of us in a religious sense and we just kind of like go on autopilot. But the thing is, is you can't go on autopilot now. And, and that's why... This is why the, the sensationalism of quote unquote end time stuff is so dangerous because it gets the people who would even be the elect to start looking for fireworks and, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger and all this kind of crazy stuff to think like, okay, you know, like, you know, I'm a, I'm a kill some demons. It's like, it's not like that, man. You know what I mean? It's not, it's John McClain. That's the guy from Die Hard. Sorry. It John just, father said Arnold Schwarzenegger, and I was like John McClane. Yeah, but like, yeah. Well, I mean, good, that was a good segue because I thought you were saying John McCain. I was like, yeah, like John. McCain. Well, I mean, <laughs> like I mean, John. he's a, he's a he's a symptom. But well, I think people are looking for a, for fireworks, but they're not paying attention for a terminal illness. You know what I mean? That well, it's kind of like a a, a, a you could have stage five cancer, and there's no fireworks. It's just like at stage four, it's already spread everywhere, but you don't even really know you have cancer because you haven't been paying any attention. Mm -hmm. So 
Father, I, I this is actually a question I've been wanting to ask real quick vis-a-vis fireworks in like end times. So like here I am just an Orthodox Christian living in Missouri, blah, blah, blah. And let's say for an example, let's just throw out this crazy notion, whatever, that Elon Musk did build a giant space laser and used it to rain down fire upon Maui. Okay. Let's so let's just as like this wild speculation, whatever, which, you know, whatever, I believe it, but that's fine. Like this is spoken about in revelation from what I understand, possibly mm-hmm. bringing that they are able to call fire down from the sky. Mm-hmm. So as far as like sensationalism and stuff like that with the stuff from revelation and this doesn't have to be a whole not the rest of the recording, but is this, are, are these things I like living in Missouri, am I going to see these things or is it like, Two years from now, Christ comes back. He's like, yeah, all that stuff came true. But but you, you already just, just did. You already just yeah. did because you're talking about it. So you already sure. you already did see it. But the way I've always pictured it, and I think that this is where my question is, is the way I've always pictured it is some kind of the concentration camps for Orthodox Christians or something like that. Something that's like right. You already in- saw it. You already saw it okay 2020 and 2021 you uh, you literally already saw it but so they were quarantining I, people who didn't take the vaccine they like, were they look, put them like, in quarantine look, hotels like look like this like this is actually forgive me andrew i just want to use you for an example absolutely right? what you're doing right now is exactly what i'm talking about okay that's exactly what i'm talking about because it is part of the problem with um us coming out as, you know, as, as Americans, as Westerners, as converts living in this time, having these um, apocalyptic, post-apocalyptic narratives and images just swirling everywhere Mm -hmm. where the grosser understanding is to just kind of go down on the um, kind of action, action comic level. Right. But remember, that's the that's that's the setup. Right. Uh, That's that's the problem, because like Supreme was just saying, we've already seen it. We've already seen it. And that's the problem is that people are still like, no, that wasn't that wasn't a thing. It's like, no, it was a thing. It was a thing like the movements. Okay. Let me try to explain it in this way. In the spiritual warfare, right? If someone's living a life of watchfulness, whether they're, you know, clergy, monastic, or laity, right? Someone's living a watchful life, right? They know at that point, if you're like, okay, you know, I'm actually trying to, you know, be watchful, be vigilant. They don't ex- they don't expect the devil to come say, here's a bunch of crack and here's hookers. Right? Because they know that if the devil is to be so overt like that, he shows his hand. Are you following me? Yes. But here's the problem. Sometimes the devil can still hook you. With crack and hookers, mm-hmm. <laughs> do, you, do you see what I'm saying? No, one hundred percent. And 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 that's that's why I, I I know it's tough for people to hear because I've had I've I've you know it's just every time I do a class on confession or repentance or something like that, there's inevitably going to be someone who's going to feel like, man, it's so hard to be saved. Man, it's like, it's like, well, kind of, yeah, it is. And I, I know people don't want to hear that. I'm going to say it kind of is. Here's why. Is it because God is mean and not merciful? No. It's because the stakes are high, man. And the devil is is not playing around. And he doesn't have to do much because we are so inundated and our senses are so dulled that it doesn't really take much. That's see, that's the thing. It doesn't take much. It doesn't take much for someone to kind of just give up on their humanity 
because of fear, because of fear of not having something. Like that, that's how bad it is, is that we don't even need something crazy like a concentration camp like Red Dawn. You don't need it. You don't need it, right? Because we're already living in it. I mean, the smart cities and all that stuff, like it's it's already happened. We and we've 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 not only have we allowed it, we've participated in building it. Like that's what people don't understand. Sure. We we've participated in building it. And that's why getting back to this understanding of like the broader reality of what was or what is actually good about society comes from Christ. And so it's time for people to really stop and reflecting, but what was good about society? Like, I'm going to go there a little bit because it was taken out of context and I just, it's so bad, but I want to kind of have a little spin on it in regards of like MAGA, right? Like, let's really kind of pull that apart because what, what did make America great, right? I mean, we're, we're talking about Christ, period, <laughs> yeah. period. And, and, and I'll just say this. I'll just say this. Yeah. Masons, deists, all, you know, all that stuff. The Enlightenment ruined the world. Sure. I, I'm with all that. But see, this is the thing that people don't understand, and a lot of Orthodox Christians, we can make that mistake in thinking that, you know, limiting the power of God, right? We limit the power of God. Let me give you an example of how. Um, yeah, people who are outside of our tradition, they do not have the fullness of the faith. Absolutely. And it, it shows you how powerful the things of God are, that even though being outside of the tradition, they still reap the benefits of the grace of reading scripture, for example. That's an easy one, Right. Even if someone's misinterpreting scripture and all that stuff, there's 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 a benefit and a grace and a power that thought that mm -hmm. is to be found in someone who, even in their ignorance, is trying to obey the commandments to the best of their understanding. Right? Okay, you're getting off the rails, Father. You're starting to sound like whatever. Let me give you an example. Uh, in the uh, if you've ever read my elder Joseph, right? There's this great story about that monk who, um, what is it, who was so ignorant, right? He thought that Annunciation was, was a, a saint, saint yeah. right? I okay. love this story. Yeah. Right? So real quick, right? The, 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 he was so ignorant. He didn't know anything. He thought the Annunciation, he thought Annunciation was a saint. And so he wanted to have fresh fish. Uh, for the feast day, a saint, you know, of the Annunci of the Annunciation, and so he's like, "Oh, Saint Annunciation, you know, please, I want to celebrate your feast the right way. Please grab me fish." So, boom! This huge fish flies up, and he has this like fish. He, he catches out a fish window. out, out okay. the window. Yeah, it's like, "Thank you, Saint Annunciation," and it's like, oh, "What? Right? Okay." And see. That's kind of like an example. Now, someone, I mean, if you want to be pedantic and be like, well, he's actually orthodox. And so blah, blah, blah. It's like, look, man, <laughs> the point I'm trying to get across is um, in this sense, I will use our Lord's words of unless you are, unless you come as a, as a, as a little child, you can no wise enter the kingdom. That type of innocence and that, that absence of guile um there's something to be said for it. And there's something to be said for the fact that the power of Christ is, is Christ is so generous and the power of Christ is so huge that even those who are outside of the boundaries of the church experience the grace of God. Mm -hmm. No one can deny that. Mm -hmm. No one can deny that because all of us who are converts, the reason why we came to the church is because of God's grace. I was just about to say, if there were no, if, if God's grace was not outside the church, it would be impossible for there to be converts. Because right. what reason would we have to convert? <laughs> right. And so the thing is, it's just like when you read in the book of Acts, how people were brought to an understanding. And then what happens? Then they go like, oh, we have this understanding. We want to be baptized. Okay, great. And they go get baptized. And then, they, and then they're brought in through the right channels. Now, I'm saying all that to say this, getting back to the larger question of society. 
if people don't st- discern, how do you, okay, father, how do you discern then, right? I'm saying number one, step one, we got to be discerning now, right? It's it's getting ready to be go time, right? A lot of things that are coming up, right? Um, we can think, oh, the, you know, um, pandemic 2.0 isn't really a thing anymore. They're trying, but it's, it's fizzing out. I wouldn't be so quick to think that it's fizzing out, right? Um, so that's kind of like on the horizon. But this thing that we're talking about here in regards of these movements, right, where people are fed up, they're sick, and they want action, they're tired of the lawlessness, okay? It's worked in the sense that people have been so ground down that people a couple years ago were like, yeah, I see it, but I'm not buying it. They're starting to buy it now. And not necessarily just because they've had some sort of terrible encounter, but because they've been kind of lulled to sleep. I think a lot of people have been, you know, comfortable in like kind of in Tim Pool land and been like, yeah, I'm above it. I see it. And they keep watching stuff on YouTube in a, in a non-discerning way. And they're not really having real life encounters. It's always someone else's city. Right. And so since it's always someone else's city, it's like, you know, it, this is the thing. Oh, I know what's going on, and just thank God it's not me. Are you following mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So they have. Well, that a... was that. Try that. Try that in a small town. That was that. Oh, that yeah. Jason Aldean song. There it is. That yeah. what? That's exactly the spirit behind. Try that in a small town. It's yeah. like it's happening there, but it ain't happening here, and it better yeah. not happen here. Like you know, yeah. but it's like, but it's not happening to me. Right. right. That's the spirit of try that in a small right. town. Right. And so the thing though is that that person who's like that. I mean, they don't know what's at stake. Mm. They don't. They don't know what's at stake, right? Um, and so, when we realize that, like, you know, it's like, what are we to do then, right? Because this sounds like a lot of work here. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, it is a lot of work. Um, and that's kind of like the point of everything is what we're trying to. Talk, what we've been talking about is. I don't know about anyone else, but as an Orthodox Christian, as a disciple, it isn't something I check in and out of. I don't check out of it because, well, I want to watch, you know, whatever. (laughs) You know what I mean? I don't I don't hang the hat over here when it's because I want to. Because like, oh, well, I need a break. I'll just I'll set you over here and then I'll come back to you in a day or two after I've kind of done whatever. We all fall. We all have our missteps. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a a decision to not be watchful. Mm. I'm talking about a decision to to be. um, And when I mean watchful, I don't mean just watching everybody else who you think is wrong. I mean yourself. (laughs) I mean, am I really seeing things the way they are? Right. Right. You know, forget, time? forgive, forgive me, Father. Forgive yeah. me. I'm sorry because I just, I, I, this was going on in my mind, and I just had to jump in with this because it's. I feel like you're saying this, and I had never thought about it this way. But um, now, being a father of, of young children, I certainly see it this way. That that actually, this approaching approaching life in this childlike manner, there's actually a type of discernment that children have that I think we lose. Mm-hmm. Like my when I, when my daughters will ask me about things and I'm noticing that they're actually seeing things that I am taking for granted often. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, like what, people get annoyed when kids will be like, why, why, mm-hmm. why? But it's like, yo, when was the last time you ever asked yourself yep. why? Yep. When was the last time that thing you've been letting this thing happen and you haven't asked why at all? So and me, it's a problem. Let, let me let me drop this on you real quick because I just I was just doing some catechism uh, today, and I was in this part where I was talking about the the portions of the soul, right? So the rational faculty, right? The volitional faculty and the appetitive faculty, right? So the intellect, the will, the heart. So the intellect, you know, as you know, the intellect. I try to tell people think of it as the what. Right. It's the what? What is this? Right. What is going on here? What, what is this thing? The the um, volitional part, the will is like, OK, how? How do I get this? How do I get out of this? How do I do this? Right. The how. Right. 
the heart is the why and the who. So if you take that, and now let's butt that up to what you just said. What did you just say, Cyprian? I said that little children are discerning in a different way. Wow. And, the, and the thing that we all know is that they say, why, why, why? And we don't say, so many of us, we don't say why. Yeah. And we get annoyed at them for saying right. why. And, and why? Why? What, what is the faculty of the soul that engages the why? That's the heart. That's the heart. Mm-hmm. You see, most people, most Christians are, are not living in their heart, not in the way that the fathers talk of the heart. They're living in their mind. They're living in the rational faculty, right? And they don't even think to ask why in that sense, right? Because the, the pride of life has blinded them so much, they think that they already know the why, hmm. right? They think they already know the why, and so they, they don't question themselves. And so I, I bring this up because that's the even deeper level of, of being watchful. It's one thing to kind of like suss out Trump and see where, you know, Hitler's rising, you know, or whatever. Um, it's another thing to be like, okay, like, you know, and I know this is tough for people. This is what really, you know, I think kind of gets people's goat, but it's like, that's going to happen. You're not, you're not going to change that. You're not going to, you're not going to change that. But what you can do is you cannot participate. Mm. You cannot, you cannot add to you don't have to give Sauron um, a body, mm-hmm. right? And I think, I think this is, I think this is where a lot of us, you know, really don't stop and reflect, but we need to, because think about conversations, right? Um, what's going on at work? You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm being serious. There comes a point where um, I've been I've been on this whole kick recently, and so you guys are probably sick of it. But people uh, out here, they're, they're I don't know if I talked about it recently, but I'll, I'll say it again. You know, um, if you're living in your head, if your faith in God and Christ is in your head. Um, like we're just kind of talking about in this regards of like not asking the why, right. And like what's going on, like in the heart, right. So the not asking why is kind of analogous to not being in your heart and not being watchful, not checking. Um, Your faculties, you know, will, will, will fail you. Right. And if your experience of God is contingent upon those rational faculties by the gathering information, the the ability to recall information. That's not prayer. That's, that's not prayer, right? Um, Prayer, the the prayer that's going to pull you through the darkness, and it has to be in the heart. Right. And I was saying this today, those of us, and yes, I stand by this, right? Those of us who did not, nobody knew what was happening, right? It's old hat. Nobody knew what was happening in 20, but there came a line and everyone had a little bit of a different line. But for those of us who just did, like, we, we hit that line and it wasn't even like being able to pull out data and evidence. It was just like something in the heart was wrong. Mm-hmm. Something in the heart was wrong, Right. That hasn't changed. It's not going to change. In fact, it, it's that was the warning that God gave us, right? You have to be in the heart because the stakes are too high. Because a time is coming where you're not going to be able to believe what you see with your own eyes. <laughs> there's gonna, There's coming a time where if you just go by what your rational faculties give you in regards of like seeing what you see, right? But if you're not seeing with the eye of your heart, it's going to be so easy to be deceived. Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? The only way to really discern is to be in the heart as, as, as the church teaches, you know, Um, because everything from 
you know, hey, man, I got too much peer pressure talking with the guys on the job site. You know, I got the guys on the job site and, you know, they're all riled up, blah, blah, blah. It's like, I get it. I get it. But um, I think about this a lot, right? How often are you in church? All right? A couple hours a week if you're pious, right? How often are you meditating in the scriptures? Honestly, right? How many people would honestly say like, yeah, I'm in the scriptures daily. You know, I'm, I'm taking that time. And then you just, I'm saying where I'm going with this. It's like, if you really, if you really begin to compare how much time you're getting influenced by the world, count up all your time on YouTube, right? All your time on, you know, it's not even, I mean, it's, it's sad. It's shameful. Actually. It's shameful, actually. Right. So I'm speaking not... for myself. I'm speaking for myself here. It's shameful. I mean, it's something I'm going to have to give word for, without a doubt. Like, it's rough. You know? So, so looking at that, and, and, I, and I know, and it's kind of like, oh, man, father, come on. You know, I got the weekend ahead of me. Okay. <laughs> I get it. But, like, at what point in time do you go, like, I got to take this for real? That, that, that That's my question. Right? Getting back to... The stakes are high. At what point in time do you say, I gotta, I gotta, I've, I've gotta get down to business, right? Because there comes a time. There comes a time. Um, and those of us who are, you know, take it seriously, right? It isn't, it isn't just about the vanity of religious life. It's like, no man, the, the stakes are high. People um, can very easily get sucked into something. I mean, we've all seen it. We've all seen someone get sucked into something, and it's like, you know, where's Jim been? I don't know. I haven't seen Jim. You know what I mean? Um, so and I don't twenty know. years is a short time, and thirty years is a short. It's a lot. It's a, well, it's later than we think. It's later than you think. Those those like. That seems like that's a long time. It's as we as we were just saying about, you know, Andrew saying, yeah, last time I saw Attack of the Clones was 20 years ago. I was just thinking about that here because, you know, there's things that are going to happen here in, in uh, Northern Mariana Islands that are going to affect like the relationship between the U.S. and and uh, the Commonwealth. And that date is like it's a set date and a known date of 2078. Right. So it's like 55 years. And I've been thinking about that a lot as I've been talking to people here and I've been like, you know, that's not that long. The current d governor right now is 68 years old. And I have a seven-year-old and a four-year-old. And the current governor went to the same school that my kids go to right now. And I was like, the governor who's going to have to deal with that is probably in one of my daughter's classes right now. Mm. Mm. That's heavy. You know what I mean? Like yeah. the governor who's going to have to deal with the issue yeah. in 55 years is in one of my daughter's classes. Okay, what are we doing? Yeah. Like the stakes are super high. Yeah. And so uh, I just throw this out too, because I know it's like, I just want to kind of get down to some of the, the gristle. You know what I mean? I don't want to give, I don't want to give platitudes here. Right. Um, it's not even so much what's said, it's how it's said. Right. I'm not, a, I'm not, a, I'm not a pacifist. I don't think that, you should just kind of watch as someone, you know, assaults, you know, tries to violate your family. Right. But how do you say it? Right. How do you, what, what is the responsibility of a leader to, right. And so that's the thing is like, because that's passions, right? Like what yep. they're like, what they're, I'm sorry if I didn't mean to cut you off, but like, oh, that's, what? that's what I heard was oh. it's passions. It's, it's, well, it's, it's anger and pride. It's, it's anger and pride. Yeah, I mean, remember, I think we were talking about this before. You know, I'm these sorry. are all kind of just cycles. What's her name? Baloney? What was it? Maloney? Maroney? Oh, the Italian. Uh, yeah. oh. Maloney. 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 Maloney, right? So it's like when, when we talked about Maloney last year or whatever, and some people were like, well, I don't know, blah, 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 blah. It's like in Matt Walsh and all that stuff, right? Was it? No, no, it wasn't Walsh. It was, um, uh, well, Walsh was in that. It was, uh, Dreyer. It's just like, ah, oh, you know, it's like this is yes. You know, he's like, yes, yes, this is what I've been waiting for. Okay. I would I would submit to someone 
it wasn't even so much what's said, it's how it's said. In her face when she said it. Right? It's it's how it's said. And so so this is the thing, like, okay, we're the Orthodox Christians, and we want to be all about, you know, all about the stuff, right? The history. We want to be about, you know, all the stuff. Okay. So the thing is, is when you begin to understand some of the, uh, like, the finer points of things like symphonia, you know, the synergy between state and the church and things like that. It's like, there's things in there in regards of, you know, the church's input in regards of having war not be, you know, a, in the sense of trying to conquer territory aggression. Like there's these things, right. We've, we've talked about this before, like, you know, Georgia and, and Georgia's approach to uh, capital punishment at the time. And this is the thing that gets people going. But again, I would say, okay, it's not so much a question of like capital punishment, but like, how are you framing the question? Right. I'll just let, let's just, let's just say, okay, great. Yeah. Um, the use of the use of force. Okay. But how are we framing the question? Are we framing it in a passionate way to, mm-hmm. Um, satiate bloodlust mm. or are we framing it in such a way as Christians in a regretful mournful sense that this is this is this is a terrible evil but right and now someone may say oh, okay whatever blah 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 like the reality is no one really thinks that you know it's interesting St. Isaac the Syrian Uh, I think it's homily 54, I think it is. Um, Don't quote me on that. But he talks about how the man who he she says, you know, the man who is basically given over to his lust. Like, so, so the lustful man basically balks at the idea of a man not being overtaken by his lust. The drunkard balks at the man who's not given over to, to drink. Mm. Right. Because he's never seen it, and he assumes that all men are like him. Mm. Well, I, I can't, I can't do that. So, like, and you see this with people. You see people's cynicism, where they're like, "Oh, okay." And and this is this is the I think the thing in some earlier you know discussions in early episodes of like, okay, you know, this thinking like this approach is Pollyanna ish or whatever. And it's like it's not really if you've actually approached it, <laughs> right? Um, but for the person who's like, nope, nope, you know, I just, I don't care. I, I'm, I'm gladly going to enjoy blowing a guy's head off. Okay. Um, it's one thing to just say, like, you're into it. That's what you're going to do. That's fine. But it's another thing to try to bring Christ into it. Let me, let me, let me play around with some scripture. God forgive me. But when St. Paul talks about, you know, uniting Christ to a prostitute, right? He says, God forbid. So it's the same thing in regards of violence. Would you reunite Christ to a murderer? Do you want to unite Christ to someone who wantonly enjoys the destruction of of human life? And not a killer, but a murderer. A murderer. Not someone who has killed, but a murderer. That's, That's the distinction, right? Because the person who kills kills with a sense of you know, remorse, reluctancy, you know, they have they have a they have a Christian understanding of the ramifications of their actions. They know what's at stake. Right? And that's what gives them a noble soul. Right? But the other ones like ah, you know, and they've been they've had their soul and their senses of the soul dulled. So this is I think the thing you know I'm trying to get at in regards of where people can really stop um, stop that, uh, I don't want to say progress, but they can stop short, right? And they can just say, I'm on the right team morally, right? Because I, I'm not down with, with maps and pedos. Um, and I'm not down with, you know, the Marxist wokesists. Great. But like... Where does, where does that get you? But what, what are you, you down with? Because the, because it, yeah, because a team you don't figure out what team you're. If if I say well what oh somebody says to me oh I play in I play in the NFL 
And I'm like, well, what team are you on? And they're like, well, it's not the Broncos or the Eagles. And it's like, yeah, that's not the answer to the question. Yeah. 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 And it, and it's and it's tough, right? Because we can go all kinds of areas with this because it's like, well, well, who are the leaders then? And who are the ones who are, who are really showing us where, where to go? Well, I guess that's above my pay grade, but I think for my part, what I am able to do, I'm, I'm doing it here. I'm trying to say it here. We're trying to talk about it in an honest way, um, which it isn't neat and clean, but it, it is real and it is honest in the sense that that's part of the trap. That's part of the trap too, where people want the, they want the script where it's like, what, just show me what the line yeah. is. You know what I'm saying? It's like, that that yeah. wasn't the um oh I, mean, I don't think it was in the prologue. I think it was just a quote by Saint that popped up that was like people who are and I'm really really paraphrasing here, but the general idea of what this um, Saint was saying was um, basically like people who don't know Christ are the mean, like the bitter people, the people who tend to cast judgment, the people who tend to like, mm-hmm. you know, take a real pharisaical view of mm-hmm. things because it's all, and I know that we are hammering in on this again and again, but it's like, because they don't know Christ, they don't experience mm-hmm. Christ. And like those moments of like, when I actually like feel how tender and like how wonderful and warm the Holy spirit is and like my interaction with God and, it, it, you know, I'm not talking about like some huge a mystical thing. I'm just talking about like some of the weight of the sin of that day is lessened. Like just like at the end of my evening prayers, like just a little bit, is just lessened a little bit. And I can feel like just this like kind of like kindness. I'm like, oh, then what's stopping me from like being this way to other people? Like, and it's my hardness. It's my hardness of my heart. That is what's stopping me because again, my faculties are disordered. I come, I come, I, I punch the data into my brain and come back with, well, they're speaking a minor heresy, like, or something like that, or they're, what they're saying is not exactly correct. It's time to correct them. And like, I don't reprove my brother in a spirit of meekness or gentleness. So then I receive judgment from it. Like, because like a story of St. Paisio's got um, a promiscuous woman came to the mountain and she was repenting and he came out and said, unclean woman get out of here like i you are you're defiling this place by being here it wasn't on athos but it's out of another monastery or something so obviously it wasn't athos and he was immediately assailed by very like lustful passions like very like very very like um a sexual temptation and he's like it would be better for me if i were eaten by bears and he um was like through prayer and like um you know, God's God working with him. Like eventually he realized, Oh, it was because I pronounced judgment on this promiscuous woman. It was because I told her to leave and that was wrong of me. And like, you know, I think he probably ended up in going, making it right with her or something. But like, I essentially, that's what I was trying to say is, is like, it, there's a huge difference between understanding what Christ is saying and actually like experiencing it. And I think that's TM. That's the trademark of the Royal path. It's just being like able to understand, like, Christ is a person, not a philosophy. So, yeah, I mean, the the mo- sorry. So, uh, well, the, the most the most convicting thing, or the most profound thing for me. Has been. The realization that the, the when I'm the most powerfully c- convicted. One would think that it was like, as you said, like with the example of St. Paisios, one would think that it would be in like being punished like, oh, I've sinned and therefore I'm being punished. But it's actually been not that. It's actually been maybe, and this is like the prodigal son, but maybe it's, it's, but what it's really been is like when great mercy has been heaped upon me, even when I know that I, that like, that, that I am mired in sin. And then that's what really makes me want to fall to my knees and, and weep is because I'm like, why? Like, why would you? I'm doing so terrible. And why would you heap mercy on me? Because then it's like, okay, well now I can't be a sinner. I can't be a sinner like this. Because it's his loving kindness that leads us to repentance. And this is precisely, I guess, um, kind of cutting through some of the quagmire of me rambling is that you can't 
destroy evil with evil. You can't, it isn't an eye for an eye. And that's what Christ teaches us. That's what Christ brought to society, right? Um, and trying to make the world more comfortable isn't Christian because the righteous cannot feel comfortable in this world, right? So what is happening and the, the great danger, one of the many great dangers in this is, is the trying to build a utopia, mm of trying to build a utopia where we got it all we got it all locked in look again no platitudes um yeah nobody wants to live in a situation where like was being talked about where you can't even go to the store without having to deal with you know looters nobody wants to deal with that right and god forbid people actually fall fall in line and believe you know, the the twisted pervertedness of many liberal, um, you know, people of a politically liberal persuasion who just want to blame the victim and, you know, um, give support to the perpetrator because that's wrong too, right? That's, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about, you know, give the child molester, you know, a, a, a cushy cell, um, and that's not what we're talking about, right? Um, but what we are talking about is just because we we recognize and acknowledge the need to deal with some unfortunate realities, right? That doesn't mean you get your, that, that doesn't mean you get off on it, right? That's the point. Mm. Oh, I mean, to make it kind of simple, yeah. like that. Yeah, it's 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 the cheering. It's the it's it's it's, it's 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 the cheering. It's not necessarily a maybe somebody did get shot in the back because, you know, yeah. whatever happened, this is an unfortunate situation. Yeah. And it, but the cheer, the nonstop cheering for it is yeah. the problem. Like that's the, the 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 kind of just reveling in it. And someone goes to be like, yeah, come on, father, but it's a political rally. And people was like, OK, yeah, I get it. But that's the point. Yeah. Right. But he's running for president who is who is going to be like the. The the figure, it's the person that you're putting in front to say this person represents me to the world mm -hmm. and what I believe and what I think and how I want to 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 be seen like it's not. Yeah, it's yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean. This this reality of. How will Christ recognize us? Well, you got to know who Christ is first. And so it's this thing of, you know mercy right not mercy because we have you know in the last days they will say they'll call what is good evil what is evil mm. good i don't mm. mean i'm not talking about that approach right what we're talking about is vengeance is mine thus saith the lord mm. right it's having enough faith enough trust to say <laughs> I know this is crazy, but I have to rise above it because Christ ca calls us above what's natural. Like there's the natural, there's the contra natural, which is below that. And then there's the supernatural, right? So the natural is just the kind of like way of things, right? In a natural sense, it's like, okay, right? According to kind of like natural law and order, right? You loot Contra my natural, store, I can but, shoot you. you huh? That's like the natural. You loot my store, I can shoot you. Yeah, or like you come into my house, you try to, you know, hurt my daughter. You know, I have to stop you. I can't okay. let you hurt my daughter, right? The contra natural is I hope you come. Mm. I hope I, I want to build a trap so that I can, you know, I can revel in carnage. That's contra natural, right? It's it's contra. It, that's of the demons, right? The demons, right? Whether it is disordered sex or or reveling in the mutilation of bodies, right? Doesn't matter whether you're doing it for the sake of you know God and country or not. It's it's contra natural. That's that's demonic, right? And then. 
there's the supernatural where we're called above that. We're called above these things. And that's what Christ does. Christ brought to the world this higher calling. He reveals what it means to be God, right? Did God, does he, did he come down and just like destroy everything because of, no, right? The humility, the mocking, look at the icon of the extreme humility, right? And everyone wants to be like, yeah, but that's Jesus, not me. Okay, well, that's fine. But if you're a Christian, sorry, buddy, that needs to be you too. Because this is why I would say it's important for people to really discern. It's like, if you're an Orthodox Christian, and this is so many people, more than I realize, they really have just slapped on, you know, kind of icons and cassocks over their, you know, Calvinist evangelical mm. understandings mm. right and and it's it's always discerned and sussed out when you start getting in this realm of like okay let's take it out of the realm of like peace nick or like pacifist this let's let's not talk about that let's just talk about being christian what like what have the saints done how many times have somebody saints walked in somebody robbing them and they act like that it's not their cell or whatever, and they help them load up their stuff. Yeah. yeah. And like say, no, no, like here, take yeah. it. Like yeah. this old fool will never notice that you took all this stuff. Right. And so the argument goes, of course, like, well, well, when are you able to engage in battle? Blah, blah. Well, when it's in the defense of other, right? But when it's in the defense of yourself and your belongings and your things, that's a different thing. You know what I'm saying? So this reality that Christ calls the world to because our laws, our society, even the, 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 the ethics by which we live unspoken or not, they all are formed by Christ. Right. And so how do we manifest that through imitation? Right. That's what he's calling us to do. He's calling us to live out that life. That's he's calling society to live out that life. That's why, Another part of the problem with the kind of, um, you know, uh, Kirk Cameron left behind kind of like chick track approach to the apocalypse is that it isn't clean and it isn't that like, uh, it isn't that, that, that neat in, in a straight line. It isn't that linear, right? Because, um, this is this is my Girardian self kind of like coming through, but things are progressing in a certain way, right? Um, there things are things have changed for the better in broader society because of Christ, right? Because of Christ, um, like the king. Well, and that's part of the problem, right? I'm, I'm, the king can't just come and rape your your wife and kids anymore and just be like, you know what I mean? Like they he can, right? The government does it all the time. But you get what I'm saying? It's like before the king could just kind of come like, nope, you know, I'm gonna boil you in oil and like take your wife and kids and your land and like there's no recourse at all. Like, Happened all the it. time. Institutionalized. Institutionalized, right? But at least no matter how bad you want to say a certain group of people are oppressed, whatever, at least there's that notion of someone the fact that you're even aware of like something is is unjust mm. right that's christ well for now it feels but, like the the context we're talking about is it feels like those things are starting to fall apart and that's my point again that's why i keep i'm, I'm trying to keep circling around this thing about like that's why we can't lose that sense of the broader thing it isn't it it's everything about our personal connection to Christ. Yes, that's everything. But we can't lose that broader aspect either. You know, touching base on when we were talking about with Campbell and like the hero's narrative, right? Like the archetypes. And like, this is where um, Peterson is helpful in that sense and helping people to zoom out a little bit. And that's not wrong. Peterson isn't wrong when he does that. Peterson is wrong when he leaves it there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. exactly yeah Peterson he doesn't go thing. for it far enough yeah peterson's wrong when he leaves it there that's the problem right that's the problem but that's i think i think 
traditional Christians need to zoom out a little bit more mm. sometimes. Having That's a great though. father. That is a great. I'm. Oh, that is. I. The imagery of this is just so good of like, here's the problem. Peterson says, like, zoom out. And then he starts talking about the problem. But the real problem is back here is Christ. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Peterson's it's mm -hmm. like, no, 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 Jordan, keep zooming. Keep zooming. Yeah. Keep zooming. Zooming. And then yeah. it's like, oh, <laughs> yeah. if only you would just zoom out a little further, Jordan. Yep. Right. Because he's he's zoomed out to the point where he sees Christianity, mm -hmm. but he doesn't zoom out all the way to Christ. That's right. That's right. That's right. And that's and that right there is where we kind of need to get to. Right. Because that zooming out is is where we can begin to maybe have good dialogue again amongst ourselves. Because I'm not even concerned about trying to like, like, so this is where I keep tension. I, I'm probably wrong. I don't know. Like, who am I? But for me, I keep tension of like, I don't have any faith or hope in the state at all. I think the state is, is a fallen entity. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't like period. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I think that it happens on the level of, community and even broader quote unquote like the church right because <laughs> the call for the church to maintain uh a working autonomy from society i think is i think that's i think right now for me that's the ticket right so let me just kind of like pull away from the hors d'oeuvres and the bruschetta and all that stuff. And let me just kind of get to the stake right now. Okay. And let me just say that I think what needs to happen, I think that you need to have um, communities that are very strong based upon, first and foremost, their understanding of the experience of Christ in tradition. Why? Because if it's just the experience of Christ on a personal level, you fall into Protestantism and you fall into the fracturing of people's subjective experiences, which that well, doesn't work. God told me. God told me, blah, 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 blah. Right. And that cuts you off from history. Right. And there's so much that we can, we're supposed to learn from history. And if we weren't, he would have come back. Right. So we're supposed to build tradition is that ground in which the Holy spirit, it's the evidence of it's, it's the history, the evidence, the experience of the Holy spirit in the life of the church. That's what tradition is, right? That's what tradition is. Tradition is the manifestation of the Holy Spirit in the life of the church. Tradition is the ground by which society is able to um, be in proper synergy with God, right? Because tradition should dictate how we live our lives, on a on a on a personal level, on a on a fam familial level, on a community level, right? It's it's like it just it zooms out, right? And I, I'm talking, I'm not talking abstractly. I'm talking about like in America, 2024, you know, or 23, whatever. So, if we had communities that were living in such a way where they were, you know, I don't want to start using words like distributionist and all that stuff, but like you get what I'm saying, you know, where People were really trying to live to a, a, a an authentic Christian standard of, you know, people above things, right? And the 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 tradition and our faith guiding our principles and our ethos. Then what happens is those communities are strong on every level, economically, right, culturally, right, spiritually, because that interdependence begins more and more to mirror the life of the Trinity, right? It's a Eucharistic community. A Eucharistic community is a community that understands its interconnectedness because it understands that it is a reflection of God, right? Are you following me? That community, as it begins to thrive economically, culturally, socially, it will then become attractive to other people People who are outside of the tradition of the faith, as they see 
people who have begun to maybe not figured everything out, but that, hey, they're doing something better than what I'm doing on my own or what this other community that I'm part of is doing. And they're answering questions that I maybe didn't even realize those questions were needing to be asked. That's the type of thing that a lot of people are looking for. So as communities do that because they're grounded in tradition, that tradition is opening them up to grace. Grace is, you know, part of the reality of grace is the revel- the revelation of God and the life of a people and a community that begins to become attractive, right? That attraction then begins to now draw um, plumbers, HVAC guys, lawyers, um, gardeners, seamstresses, you know what I'm saying? Like, and and people who have, the you know, occupations and skills and, you know, are raising children, right? They, they, they see the value of having an investment in local community. And as they begin to grow and they begin to have, you know, people from various spheres of society join within that community, they begin to now have influence outside of, said local community and begin to now have some means to not necessarily influence the broader community, but navigate it. And and that right there is the distinction that I want to make right now, because someone could be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then from there we can like inform politics. And I go like, nope, that's, I think the error that we make because from my perspective right now, that's where you need to pivot and say, Actually, it's not really so much about trying to um, influence broader culture in that sense, because once you could become a part, this is what's been seen. Once you become a part of the bigger, once you become a part of the beast, you're part of the beast. Mm -hmm. Like you're not going to get out of the beast. So the thing is, from my perspective now, is to kind of like Lily put it, you know, Gulliver's Travel and just kind of like navigate as much as you can kind of stay nimble, stay aware and really carve out for yourselves um, God pleasing lives that function to such a capacity that if you're too small, then you're going to have problems, right? It becomes insular. You lose a sense of an aspect of tradition, which it has to be broader than just your kind of, subjective local flavor right things get weird but you don't want to get so big that you begin to lose the salt the savor and i think i think that's the thing to understand because for me that's the value of being post empire and what i mean post empire i mean post christian empire post byzantium right um post holy russia is that we realize like the reality of the um uh what not not aggression but the um and not disdain but the hostility in which we find ourselves that's good like the problem with wanting to get bigger and influenced culture is that you're you're wanting utopia that's not that's not the thing well you're wanting to you're wanting to remove the tension that's there even though the tension is exact like that's exactly the success. It's like the what do they say? Shirt sleeves to shirt sleeves in three generations, mm. to where they're like some you know the guy who's the self made. Uh, that's the first generation. He goes mm. from rags to riches, first generation, or maybe he goes to rags to like well to do. Then like hit the second generation, who he still kind of instilled some of the frugalness from before or whatever on them. Tried to make life a little bit hard for them then that's the real like shining star and like makes the family super wealthy and his kids by the time they're dead the family's broke mm. because they were raised in the lap of luxury mm. and then it all and and it all mm. fell off and they didn't know and it just both shirt sleeves to so, shirt sleeves in three generations mm-hmm. father what have you found the most difficult part about starting a paramilitary like cult society <laughs> that you're talking about right now. What? I know, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Like, I think that's not the obvious <laughs> accusation, but I think something that you brought up actually in the group chat that we have um, is the difference between Ted Kaczynski 
and Saint Seraphim Rose. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's like the differences between those two people. Mm-hmm. One was for the kingdom and one was to whatever fight the beast on the beast's terms or something mm-hmm. like that, you know. Well, and, like, one was supernatural and one was contranatural. Yeah. yeah. Fa- Father you Father when you when you said that it really it struck me like it's been going on in my mind and it's totally related to to what you're saying because tradition is ne- tradition is like the pathway to the supernatural it seems. Because like what what I was getting when you said it was profound. That's it's such a profound framework that you presented there because it's so true. Like the natural seems to me like in this context of, you know, someone breaking into your house. Well, someone breaks into your house. You have to do something. That's the natural. Right. Like Mm -hmm. someone breaks in. I got to do something. But I was also thinking something like, you know, the natural state of like uncivilized man is something like. I wake up, I'm hungry, there's fruit on the trees or whatever. And so I go and find fruit is growing in nature. Nature's doing its thing. I'm doing its thing. I'm natural. And that's just how the animals live. Right. And then contra natural is like how you how you said about like, oh, I'm going to actively plan to hurt another human being. And I'm going to see virtue in hurting another human being. But that would also be like banditry. Right. So probably the first thing was probably bandits like wait, those that tribe over there is going to go out. They're going to hunt and gather. They're going to come back and ha- bring the food back. We'll just go and steal it. We'll just go in there with spears. We'll make some spears. And that's like the beginning of 2001, right? With the bone mm-hmm. and everything. Mm-hmm. But then the supernatural, and I think that, and that's also that we're going to shoot them in the back. But then I was thinking like, well, what's the supernatural? Where the supernatural is sort of like heart-centered and being like, okay, Why? Perhaps in the future, someone will break into my house. Why would they do that? And who are they? Because they haven't broken into my house now. So maybe there's something that I can do in the world that will change things for this person and for people like them so that they wouldn't feel the need or want to break into my house. And then I solve the problem. But it requires me to do like work now for something that's going to happen in the future. Yeah, and I see that yeah, I see yeah, that almost I mean, like a like a like a, a, a building a, a church and putting icons and all of that. That's also that when somebody walks in in that moment. But you did that 100 years or 200 years or 300 years before. Yeah, forgive me. And and I want to be charitable to people because a lot of people can't get behind with you with what you said. Um, and that's kind of part of the problem, too. But to to be charitable to people, it, it, you don't even have to go that far about like. Mm thinking about the bandit and like, why did he do that? Cause I'm not disagreeing. I'm just saying, I know for some people that feels super uh, bleeding heart liberal. Right. Um, They just, yeah. Yeah. I guess for some people it would. Yeah. Some people. So I'll just be charitable and I'll say, you don't even have to go that far. You can just say, um, God help me. Mm -hmm. Um, And and, and see this right here. People don't, (sighs) What I'm about to say, people, I don't know if they do that. And like, uh, maybe this is revolutionary. But have you said, God, um, I know your commandments. You've, you've put me in a place where um, I, I shudder at the thought of, of having to, you know, take a life. Um but I'm responsible for for what you've given me. I'm responsible for this for this woman and these children. Give me wisdom, God. Give me wisdom. You know, you know my situation. You know where I live. You you know um, the potential of these things, Lord. You're my buckler, my shield, Lord. But you know, you've also called me to be a steward. Show me how I'm to, how, how I'm to navigate this, mm-hmm. right? And as you pray about it and you pray through it, you talk with people, you read scripture, like, see all this, what I'm saying, people don't want to hear this. That's, that's what I'm trying to get at is this right here of praying and and trying to commune with your God and, and, and go through the process of speaking with people, reading about it, like discerning what you're supposed to do. How about that? And how about where you get to this point where you're like, this is what I've chosen to do. These are the things I've, I've chosen to do in regards of wisdom to steward my family, to protect my family. And I pray I never have to do it. See, to me, yep. that may sound little house on the prairie, but to me, that's the Christian approach. Like just doing that. But see, that's the problem is that people. But, just... but father, forgive me. It's also how you would actually really protect your family. 
Well, it is. And and forgive me, that's that's kind of like the problem is that people would just go like they roll their eyes at that and they go, Oh gosh, okay, whatever. You know, it's like, okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's only uh, okay, but like stories of like people calling on the mother of God and their guardian angels and being saved from scratch. Yeah. Yeah. And and the thing is we just yeah. we roll our eyes because our hearts are so hard. Our hearts are so hard. So then here's the other side of it where it's like, man, I, you know, the summer of love, the, the BLM riots, mm-hmm. COVID, mm-hmm. it was all from, it, you know, God allowed all of it. Like, yeah. man, I mean, I, I, I'm i just going to say it right now. I feel really comfortable saying this. I could, I'm probably wrong about everything. I don't think I'm wrong about what I'm about to say. Has it ever dawned on anyone that we're already in judgment? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I think, I think people, and that's the problem. People get caught up in this. They think like, no, we can, whatever. It's like, no, man. Um, if you really take a look at what's going on with everything, we're at a place where God's kind of just, he's already judged us. The, 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 the craziness. Now, let me just finish my thought. The craziness in which we're seeing where it's, everything is contra natural. Where contra natural mm-hmm. is is the the order of the day, the soup du jour. Yes, that is the evidence of the judgment. That that's what I submit to everyone yeah. to say. No, no, not judgment is coming. We've already been judged because yeah. we we're living in a time where everyone scratches their heads because everyone is seeing right. You know whether you're a a a, a Jewish female attorney you know name mm-hmm. wolf whatever like these people like i was watching um uh that exodus you know series i just saw one of the episodes i saw the oh one, the peterson the, the peterson, peterson one, one yeah. and it's the one where it's like the, i had to click on it of course because it was the yeah. main time. like i believe the okay. devil i i it's basically dennis it the the title is like i wouldn't you know i i believe in the devil now or something like that whatever and it's dennis yeah. prager who's like yeah because yeah, you know the Jews, I mean, they, they don't they don't believe in that stuff. So, mm-hmm. you know, he's like, it, it's like, I I can't believe I'm saying this, but actually, if I didn't know any better, I actually believe that there's a devil, right? Yeah. It, right. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> so the thing is, when you have people who, I mean, you know, that's the kind of functional atheism. That excuse me, that's mm-hmm. the religious atheism that which is Judaism, which is very mm-hmm. religious atheism, right? When they're saying like, yeah. Uh, there's obviously some sort of evil, right? It's mm-hmm. we've already been judged. Yeah. We've already we've already been judged. So yeah. so what's left? Of course, there's repentance. Of course, there's repentance. You know what I mean? The Ninevites, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I think that gets back to what I'm saying about communities and communities finding. I'm, I'm sorry, Father. Fa- I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You just blew my mind right there. So I gotta like. I got to I got to step back because I'm sure that there are some people who are as like I don't know how I missed this this whole time. Okay. So there's there's judgment, right? And then yeah, I had never I figured that it was like judgment and then okay, here's the result, but it's like no, it's always judgment. The judgment happens. Then the prophet comes and says, Hey, God has that. Here's God's judgment. And then there's the opportunity for repentance. I never Mm -hmm. like, it's like, no, you have opportunity to repent now Mm -hmm. before the, before, before the judgment is made, you have the opportunity to repent before the judgment is made manifest, which is like, now my mind is blown and I don't understand. I didn't. Wow. I had never understood that. I had never understood that. That's why you know, it's like coming to that understanding. It's like, oh man, what a blessing, you know, COVID was, right? Because this is this is the zooming out of like th- this is what it means. This is heaven and hell, right? Because for those who are in Christ, that judgment is a call to repentance, and the pain that it comes, it's chastening, right? You know you're not a bastard because you're you're chasing God chases those whom He loves, right? COVID was a judgment, and it was a chastening. Both the same. It's at the same time, right? The 
the the craziness, the absolute contra natural reality that we're living in with maps and trans, you know, people being elected and all that stuff, that's judgment. That that's that's God stepping back and be like, okay, you, you know what I mean? It? You want it? You want it? Here you go. go. That's not coming judgment. We're in that judgment now, right? But there's also the hope for for repentance. But the problem again, I think, is that there's people who they get to Billy Graham with it, and they think that America is going to get swept away in some sort of revival. Ah, I think that there's certain things which this is that's a whole other episode. Maybe we could, you know. I don't know, do something else about that. But I think that the I look at certain things, which I go like, no, it's later than you think. Um, the timeline is further, the, further along than people think. But that doesn't mean that there isn't repentance and there isn't um, certain movements for a purpose within that judgment. Yeah. Right. And I, I'm sorry, Father, you have a continued thought. That's it. Oh. So, okay, sorry. Let me just dial it back. Okay, so we're coming up on two hours, which is fine. That's totally fine. And I th I think that's um, what I was trying to ask earlier. And that's fine. I'll totally be the example of like, okay, you kid, you've been raised on comics and TV and movies your entire life. You're expecting something super sensationalist. You're expecting to be able to see the Death Star in the sky. And then there's troops raining down, killing Christians left and right, whatever, blah, blah, blah. I guess my have you seen Dylan Mulvaney's TikToks? <laughs> so okay. <laughs> what I'm trying to ask, no, to answer your question, Cyprian. No, I haven't. And I don't I doubt I ever will. But um my question is, is this it or should we be looking for another? Do you know what I mean, Father? Like No, can you be more specific? What do you mean? So is this the stuff as as much as you are comfortable asking, I think that was my question. Was is this what was spoken of? Is this like that particular prophecy from Revelation coming true? Or is this like a um, is this like a precursor to something much greater and much more evident? Like yes and no, right? Um, okay. Because Hitler that's well, Hitler small, wasn't Hitler was an antichrist. Small A, yeah. And small A, and you could say there was always a potential for him to become the antichrist let's say right that potential is always there right that potential is always there but the potential is always there for repentance right but i think the thing is is this is kind of what's rough is that in regards of the broader picture to some degree what we're talking about is kicking the can down the road right okay does okay. that make sense? Yeah. What we're talking about is kicking the can down the road and in, 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 in the broader picture. Um, because, you know, there's, excuse me, one of the things that I think people, this is where, um, you know, we've been talking about like having a, a more developed Christian anthropology and, and having a, a, you know, zooming out a little bit. Um, but I think one of the problems with people who this is where and this is where this is one of the many places where and why the tradition the tradition can't be compared with anything like you know when people say like they don't say it this way but they they de facto operate like the devil is the opposite of god you know what i'm talking about where they go like yeah it's like God and the devil are opposites. You know what I'm talking about? Okay. Is this, do you understand what I'm saying? Like a yin and a yang thing? Yeah. God God has no opposite. <laughs> sure. This is this is what I'm trying to get at. People don't know, like that's There's not just... trying to be that's not trying to be cheeky or like clever, but it these are the types of things that matter, right? If you're gonna develop spiritual acuity, God has no opposite and no equal in that sense, right? It, it's more accurate to say that. Satan would be the opposite of Michael. That's a little bit more accurate. But the reason why I'm saying this is because we still act like the tradition is on the kind of like uh, uh, the, the, the playing field of ideas mm. that the tradition is competing with, with young and, you know, thank you to, you know, Jordan Peterson that 
the tradition is kind of competing and dancing with Jung and with all the great psychoanalysis and Freud and like, and, um, and even, you know, for me, like, you know, being, you know, kind of like a, you know, an armchair Girardian, you know what I mean? But all those things aren't really the thing. The thing is the tradition and not, not, and, and getting back to what we've kind of talked about earlier, not in some sort of weird fundamentalist, like just because, right. Cause that's what happens to a lot of people. Orthodoxy, just because it's like, I'm fine with that, but there's a very different thing from saying orthodoxy just because versus like, Oh no, no, no. Orthodoxy because I've experienced it. I'm telling you it's true. Yeah. Like I've done, I've done this and this and this and this, right. I've gone through, you know, uh, psychology, <laughs> you know, um, metaphysics, like blah, 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 right? I'm telling you, this is this is what actually brings about the transformation of the human person. Do you, are you following what I'm saying? Yes, the, absolutely. The, the tradition can work with those things, but it transcends it to it's not even comparable, right? Yeah. And, and the reason why I'm saying all this is because when you understand the vastness of what each individual human being is, you don't question why it's important to still um, be out in the highways and the byways to call. Mm. Um, because all of heaven rejoices when one sinner repents. And, and when you understand the vastness, like I said, of, of each human being, um, then you begin to see like, oh, this is why he did it. Oh, oh, this is this is why he did it, right? Um, it's like I've said before about a man who has a child who's just a complete disappointment to him. He would still never wish that he never had his kid. Sure, right? Because he would because the reality, the, the potential for that love is worth it, even even in spite of all the pain, right? Um, so this understanding of what's ahead, right? Um, this is what the tradition does. It, it, it shows us what, what this is all really about, right? And how to come to these places of understanding can only happen within the tradition because it isn't, it isn't psychological. Yeah. If it were psychological, I don't think it would, um, it wouldn't work the way that it does. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, I was just, talking with someone not too long ago and we're talking about self-abuse and we're talking about like, I was like, there's just not really a lot of hope. And in my opinion, anyway, at least my experience to really stop in my self-abuse, I mean, masturbation, like in this context, I like, there's just not a lot of hope, especially for a person growing up in Western society for help with that problem. If they are struggling with it, you know, in different faith backgrounds, you know, especially within Christendom, like the, Protestants and stuff, they have their ideas of how to help with that particular thing, but like the transformational or the transfiguring, I think is the correct, correct answer to, or the correct way of putting that it's, it's only capable within like the mystical energy of the traditions of the church. Like that's, that's the only place and in, in my experience of actually stopping of, of like, not only stopping, but like, like it says in AA literature, like recoiling like a mob, like, like recoiling from that thing that you used to be addicted to. It's the only thing that actually works. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. you know, I was just, I just want to say this to kind of like wrap up that last thought is, um, you know, we, we find ourselves in a place where we want to, this is what I was trying to get at in regards of, you know, thinking the traditions in the playing field of, of ideas, the marketplace of ideas, because we want to have discussions about things like, we can talk about life and, and all this without God. <laughs> I don't think anyone understands what I just said there. You know what I mean? So, um, like, that's where I think everyone should try to get at. If you, like, if you find yourself thinking or approaching something like God doesn't exist, you got, you got some work to do. <laughs> yeah how could you even discuss how could you even discuss the creation without the creator it doesn't you, i mean it doesn't I, even make sense no, how I mean, can how can you discuss human beings and things like 
Why yeah. shouldn't I kill a bunch of people? Why shouldn't I rape a bunch of women? Why should I just do whatever? Yeah. How can you discuss that and not have God? And people do it all the time. Christians do it all yeah. the time. Orthodox Christians do it all the time because yeah. they want to seem sophisticated. They want to be yeah. in the marketplace of ideas. They want to da 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 da, and like they don't want to seem like a fundamentalist. They don't want to, and I get it, right? But the thing is, is like either he is or he isn't. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And and I, I'll, yeah. I mean, I've had these conversations with people where it's just like I'll say something like, "Well, you know, um, talk about mental health." I'm like, "Well, I think you know this this situation requires a person to really come into greater union with Christ through repentance." And they look at me like, "Huh?" Or, or an Orthodox Christian. And I'm, and they're looking at me, huh? And they're they're saying, huh? Because I'm talking about quote unquote mental health, right? Mm -hmm. And then I've had to say to people, oh, you're shocked that I actually think Jesus is the answer. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You're you're shocked that I actually think that you know God that that you can't get somewhere without God. Absolutely, right? Like, did you see the Cossack? Did that just like totally just go? Did, did you know that just go, go right over your head? Like what? <laughs> right, and that and that's that zooming out mm -hmm. that you know people need to do even more is like mm -hmm. you know because when I say that it isn't just about like it's everything right, it, including mm -hmm. the fact that the the ground of of society and ethics that my that I that I'm operating on is is a Christian yeah. one. You, you, it's all of it. Yes. All of yeah. them. Mm -hmm. I well said. All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, okay. Yeah. Let's let's be done. Um, All right. No, I mean, I think like I just have to say that is the thing. That like, I don't want to go into a whole rant, and I won't because nobody's here for that. But I will actually, that's why they're here, right? <laughs> They're not here for me. They're here for <laughs> They're not here for Andrew ranting. They're, they're, but so, but I would say that probably Andrew's contribution is better served when he like. Well, actually, Star Wars, blah blah blah, whatever in the Dagobah system. But like, I think that is the hardest part. Is I haven't, and I've asked people kind of like not even in a cheeky way. Yeah. But I'm like, what is mental health? Mm-hmm. And like nobody has given me an answer. I'm like, I mean, I think Christ defines it is like the darkness. It's like the darkness of your like of your noose. Like, I mean, like if if you're, uh, I'm sorry, it's late. I'm tired, Father. Please correct me that if the, how great is the darkness in your body? If the darkness in your eye, you, you, you know, what I'm talking about like the for Christ to discuss it. Mm. It's like, okay, that's the best definition I've heard so far. That is the best definition is the warping of your reality towards the negative and towards the cynical, towards the hardening of your heart and ultimate spiritual death. Because if your refusal or your inability to repent of you, of your sin, mm -hmm. and that's my best definition. And it's not because it's not mine. It's, it's Christ. It, as, as far as I can tell, because I, I will ask mental health professionals, well, what is mental health? And they'll say like, well, you know, I had to, you know, I, I, oh, I had to go get a, uh, a piece of chocolate cake for lunch because of mental health. I'm like, okay, so how is that helping your mental? So is it a mental state of being? I mean, I'll just say it's demonic. I mean, <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, that's yeah. the right. ultimate thing right. that what I'm trying to end with is right. because you know how the joke was, we don't have X because of COVID then we don't have mm -hmm. X because of Ukraine. And mm -hmm. I can't do this X because of mental health. Like I can't go to an in office job anymore. I can only work for home from home because of mental health. I, I think, I think basically if you, we just mental I, health, is just a, it's just a, uh, a euphemism for demons. Well, yes, but I, what I have from the most, the most harebrained it's self-love really that's where it, that's where it ends. well that's that's demonic sure okay. yes yeah yeah no cyprian you're that's that's the correct. sin of that's satan's sin of course yeah but i like, mean i mean just to kind of like put a little bow on it it's like um just to be clear that it isn't just a kind of fundy kind of approach of like oh it's demons church lady you know what i mean but <laughs> satan 
Say it to him. <laughs> um, it's it's the book of James, right? This mm-hmm. wisdom is sensual and demonic. Oh, right? if, you read, if you read the book of James and then you kind of get into it, because you have to understand psychology is about fallen processes. Yep. Like the epistemological root of of the psychological, the the the, the epistemological underpinnings of psychology are demonic because disordered sexuality disordered That's sexuality Freud, Freud's whole yes, hypothesis but but even coming even zooming out from from that um it's getting back to the original temptation of satan for of eve in the garden yep. of self deification yep. right and so yep. so if you understand that you know and it's you know god's used it to help atheists you know god's used it to help people outside of christ to 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 you know to grant them a measure of whatever but fundamentally that's that's kind of what we're and i know this whole thing and maybe that will spark a whole nother conversation which we can dive Mm -hmm. into that but i would just say um and i know it's whatever but you're not going to find anything worthy in psychology that isn't already in the neptic fathers yep period Full stop, whatever. Full stop. Now, whether someone can can someone practice that on their own? No. no. But that's why you see the the psychiatrist, excuse me, not, not the psychiatrist, the psychologist supplanting the priest, supplanting yep. the the yep. the spiritual. Um yep. no. Anyways. <sighs> no, great. That's 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 boom. Beautiful. Um, okay, right. yeah, let's end it there. Um cool. so um i'm going to start by thanking jack again for your wonderful thumbnails i mm-hmm. i think that they're fantastic the last two weeks have been amazing absolutely like i'm like mm-hmm. yes primo 100 percent. keep it up um, i'm very very thankful um if you want to contact us you can send an email at contact at royalpath.network that is the much mm-hmm. faster way to get a response there are still people reaching out to me at andrew at royalpath.network please feel free to do so but i'm not going to be as quick at responding it's just not one of my strengths i found out um uh we have a merch store at Mm -hmm. royalpath.store we don't Mm -hmm. see any of those proceeds those either go to uh the parish or to the people who make the merch Mm -hmm. um uh yeah because someone actually asked me they were like uh how do you want to handle the some of the money that's coming in from the merch like, do you, do you want to turn around and put it into co- show costs? Like, costs for making the shows? Like, this show doesn't cost anything to make. <laughs> like, it, it there's literally no overhead. It's just three dudes. Anyway, so no, we're not seeing any of that. That's just going straight back into the parish or into the people who make the merch. Uh, we mentioned music. Generally speaking, it makes onto a uh, playlist on Spotify called Royal Path Podcast Playlist, something like that. You know, just keep typing variations of that. You'll find it eventually. And then um, also uh, there was one other thing that we normally do. I can't remember what it is off the top of my head. I'm sure it's fine if you need to get. Yeah, that's fine. Whatever. Okay, that's it. Thank you for having a good night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.